it will be like a deja vu moment, but this is the second time. <laughs> this is the third time we're recording this, just so you know. I when I was in the UK, I interviewed Mr. Who's the boss. Oh my gosh, yeah. how were you able to secure the, the he's, interview? He's an amazing person. So yeah, the same thing happened. The audio. Oh. The I think the battery. No, this was the battery this time. <laughs> anyway. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Fantastic. I went for tennis this morning, so I'm yeah. so energized and happy. And, and I saw your better. tweet. You went for tennis. Yes. You had this podcast. You had another podcast. Yes. What was a typical day like? Okay, so it, d- it depends, right? So last year, because we're fundraising, it was quite a lot of speaking to VCs and things like that. But this year, it's more about growth. So you know how it is as a CEO, you're your head of sales, so you're chasing the numbers and things like that. So every day is different, yeah. One of the questions out of the many questions the one we put in the hierarchy to to start was who is Tosi Yolasengi and what is her story and what inspires her so Oluwa Tosi Yolasengi is a young passionate person I am very aggressive about sharing the message of financial literacy right and I stumbled on it right I told a story of how I started my first job at the age of 20 and I struggled with my finances. I came back to Nigeria. I was broke. I had to go back to my parents' house and all of that. So after I learned that, I just wanted to share it with every other person. And just, you know, it's like an evangelism. Like you just want to share this money message with everyone. Also, I'm very aggressive about the growth of Africa. Talking about opportunities. How can we invest on the continent? How can we unlock certain sectors? So these are the things that actually keeps me awake. And that's who Tosin is. And I'm on a mission or we are on a mission, you know, to share financial independence with at least 100 million Africans. So in terms of what the work we're doing, we have three arms of the business. We have Money Africa, which is a financial literacy platform that leverages on technology for adults we have ladder is our investment app our fintech where people can save and invest and you know take the whole financial independence journey then we have money africa kids that's like i think that's like my baby (laughs) so every time we've been educating adults and on this whole money africa journey it's always like oh my gosh i wish i learned it as a child and it was like a light bulb moment for us also based on research by the age of seven your mindset about money has been formed. So hmm. with Money Africa Kids, we just want to educate children about money and just take that journey with them in the long run. So that's the three things we're working on. Money Africa Adults, Money Africa Kids, and Ladder, our investment app. How has the feedback been like for Money Africa Kids specifically? It has been quite interesting. Every time the parents enroll their children, like, oh my gosh, our child now sees things different. And that's what we want. We want to re-engineer their mind change how they see things like build it in the lungs and so that by the age of 18 boom you know you have this person set for as opposed to what usually happens that people only just start figuring out in their 30s Mm. and time is a critical asset when it comes to investment everybody keeps talking about how warren buffett is like one of the best investors out there but guess what he started investing at the age of 11 and he definitely did not do it on his own. Have you read about his parents? Yeah, yeah. So they definitely played some role there. And that's what we want more parents, more African parents to do for their children. Plug them into the money thing and let them start having the stock conversation early. Understanding what debt is and things like that. And the feedback has been good so far. So we can't wait to conquer the market. I like the Warren Buffett analogy as well. Yes. He's, he's one of the pioneers of like, you know, compounding yes. and, and letting money grow slowly. How has the the journey been like for you? I remember when I started my first job at the age of 20, I was working at an audit firm. I mean, they were nice people. I have to give them credit. Great company. They invested in training, but um, I know I did not want to be an an audit partner, but I didn't know what to get. And you know how they always say about life. You never really know until you have to take steps and you keep figuring it out. Stay with me. I came back to Nigeria, Brock. Right. Just before I was coming back to Nigeria, my car had gone for a fashion show and I parked (laughs) my car outside somewhere. And then I came back. I said, you know, when you're searching, started looking into God's house. I was like, uh -uh, it's not, uh -uh, uh-uh. This guy was what I packed it. It was stolen. Right. And it was not insured. So it's all those principles about investing. Like if I had insured that car, at least I would have something coming back when I was coming back to Nigeria. So I just wanted to do things different. I had to start teaching myself. And back then, there was no one platform that was educating people about money. I was on Naira land and just basically having to educate myself. I like what you mentioned about like um, insurance. And yes. you also, can you can you maybe touch more on, you know, why there's like an importance for something like that? Wealthy people do not leave things to lock. Wealthy people are very aggressive mm-hmm. about protection. Let me give you an example. 
Your health is your biggest asset. God forbid if anything happens, your first point of call will not be, you know, you want to go on social media. And I'm not saying this in a disrespectful manner for those that have had to do that. But if you have these little, little things in place, you can quickly go there. There's also a research that states that the average African is one sickness away from poverty. Mm. Nigeria has an insurance penetration rate of just 3%. Can you just imagine that? So that means that a lot of people are walking on the street with no health insurance, no car insurance, sometimes no house insurance. People are buying. Imagine you pay so much money to buy a house and your house is not insured. What if fire happens? So we need to start thinking like the wealthy. They are aggressive. They protect. They secure. Because if you don't secure, whatever you are building on it, it could fall apart. There's a saying that if you want to, you know, understand great people, and it's, it's always interesting to know it's always interesting to know who great people look up to. So um, who would you say is your inspiration? Definitely my parents. So my dad applied to go to the university in the UK, in the US for his tertiary education, but unfortunately did not get the visa. So he had to go and work as a clerk at one of those multinational firms very back then in those days. And somebody told him that, ah, do you know you can go to Congo? That's Democratic Republic of Congo. And, you know, just go and do business and things like that. It's adventurous. And I can sort of understand where, you know, um, I got that whole thing from. And he went. So he was mm-hmm. with a bicycle. He used to ride bicycles then and trying to see the margins in the market. So then he was the, after a while, he became the sole distributor for Akira in Democratic Republic of Congo. Akira is a Chinese brand for electronics. Okay. I don't know how they are doing in the market now, but back in those days, they were doing really well, right? So they had multiple shops and they would sell electronics and things like that. We literally saw it. We watched the growth over time. So, who else is my inspiration? I saw this man do it. I saw him. Real life was playing right in front of my face, right? I have huge respect for him and also for my mother as well. Uh, Every time till today, my mom will send you this really lovely message. Oh, daughter of this. (laughs) It's like she's toasting you without, (laughs) without missing it. So I know everybody is trying to build a great business and all of that, but the question is also, are you happy? Right. Mm-hmm. What are you? What is your joy level like? And my mom is very big on purposeful living. Joy. Are you happy? Are you joyful? I hope you're exercising. I hope you're eating well. So you want a rounded life. And my parents have played such critical role in that. And I'm so grateful for that. Yeah, I think it's very cool that the the example is nuclear. Is yeah. your parents? I was watching this interview with PC Timmy, um, just to switch gears again and. You know, shout out to PC TV. Shout and, out to PC TV. <laughs> and and there was something that that you mentioned. You know, you talked about like, like your car being stolen and the insurance. And I can really relate because I I had my journey from zero to hundred thousand subscribers in four years, and I had nothing to show for it. Mm-hmm. I was I was spending money. I was buying all these things, but I wasn't really accounting for it. And it was just like this epiphany that. You have, you know, public facing, 100,000 subscribers. People will think that you are, you are doing great. Mm. But I had to take that step back and, you know, do account, take the accountability, um, you know, budget, write everything. Essentially, I'm just trying to, like, ask, was, was that really the tipping point for you? Was that the point where things changed, when you had to start again from zero? I think for me, the tipping point was more when I came back to Nigeria broke right and i had nothing it felt like all those years i'd worked i had nothing to show for it and i mean i was telling the story about how i was in church and my mom had to squeeze 500 naira in my hands as offering like 500 naira even then it was like 150 naira or so to the dollar so i did not have two dollar or three dollars <laughs> offering you get so um i just never wanted to be in that situation anymore and i was a tipping but i didn't want it so there i keep talking about there are two people one is a basket and one is a bucket. Okay. A basket will see the money, but it will drip. They won't be able, they won't be able to show for it. There will be leakages. They are pass, it's passing through them. While you have the bucket, this is the people that secure. They are storing it. And I want to be a bucket. So I had to have hard conversations. I keep talking about how personal finance is 80% mindset, habits, and 20% knowledge. There are lots of people on Wall Street doing this job, telling companies what to do. I mean, when I was in South Africa, I worked as an auditor right i'm analyzing i'm 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 balance sheet i was not clueless right but nobody talks enough about the habit and i told i made a promise to myself that i want to practice what we preach so for instance i'm traveling i travel a lot because of work and other things and 
I'm like, I don't want to go without having um, a travel insurance. And I, I, when I bought my annual travel insurance plan, you know, I tweeted about it. So even at work for our colleagues and all of that, we ensure that we have the very good health insurance plan. In, if anything happens, you know, there's something to fall back on. Just that intentionality, even things like budgets, where's your money going to? So, um, yeah, it was a turning point for us and how I then started looking at things. Let's say someone has um, 800,000 there mm -hmm. and... They want to compound. They want yes. to, you know, get started on this journey. What financial instruments would you like look at? Okay, we get this question a lot. Okay. I would like to start by saying that people are in different stages of their lives. Okay. So you have the beginning stage where you're building skills and you're trying to learn and things like that. You have the second stage, which is the accumulation stage. So you're, you're mid to high, um, yeah, you're mid to high level stage where you're now like, oh, you know, I know my onions, I know my skills, and I'm really accumulating. I'm now in my mid thirties and I'm in that accumulation stage. Sometimes people get there earlier. You see people in their twenties already at the accumulation stage. Okay. Then you have the last stage, which is a preservation stage. We are closer to retirement. You want to be able to pass the baton to the next generation. The way a person that is in their, in their preservation stage will invest is not the same way a person that is in that learning and that building stage, right? So the age, the responsibility, the category of what stage you are in plays a huge role. So many a time people want me to say, oh yeah, put this here, put that here, put that there. And, and that's why we always advocate for financial literacy. So when you have the right education, you're able to know guess what so people should actually not even just be investing they should be investing in themselves mm -hmm. that money that they are putting away in dollar mutual fund and get the money out go and learn <laughs> skills because the more you're able to learn to, to to charge to learn then you can up your skill so because a lot of people you've seen our parents always talk about real estate the minute they start working they're gathering money gathering money to go and buy land i'm like are you kidding me Go and learn that skill. Go and get the next certification. Go and be, be the best in your field so you can buy multiple plots of land. So how you see it then changes the entire game. So get financial education. Identify what part of the stage you're in and then you'll be able to know what is best for you. You should, might not even need to be investing that 100K. That 100K could be used, spent, investing in yourself. Maybe that's what you need most at that point. If if someone was was, was looking to like different instruments at those stages, do, stages. You, do you have any like Absolutely. different So let, let's say you're in your building stage. I mean, uh, sorry, you're in your accumulation stage. I'm in my mid-30s and I'm currently, you know, accumulating and all of that. So definitely I want to take some, some so now we have three different types of risk assets, right? You have your low risk assets. Okay. In this category, you have your things like your treasury bills. You have things like your high yield savings. You have things like your commercial papers, right? The primary job of this kind of asset is to protect your capital, right? We're not taking any form of risk here. You have your medium term risk. Here you're investing in the stock market. You're investing in ETFs, real estate, amongst others. Then you have your high risk. You're talking about cryptocurrency. You're talking about Forex amongst others. Now, at my stage, right, because I don't have black tax, I'm not sending money home, and um, I don't have all of those responsibilities, I can afford to go quite heavy on medium risk. So I'm talking about stocks, I'm talking about investing in startups and things like that. Even if anything happens, I have another 35 or 40 years to retirement, right? I have enough, another 35 years to retirement, so I have enough time, you know, to make up for it, right? Okay. So I can be midway. If you're closer to retirement, you can't take the same risk as I'm taking, right? So your exposure to risky assets and, and you know, would be lower. I'm talking about maybe like 20% or lower. If you're in your building stage, you're in your 20s, this is the time for you to go crazy. Go and try, go and learn, go and put it. Because if anything happens, you have enough, you have another yeah. 40 years to catch up. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So go and learn those skills. Go and learn about the stock market. Go and start investing. But never forget, at the end of the day, what we really, really want to optimize for is constantly building. What a lot of people do is that they build up to a certain point, then you get. So they start saving it, then they sell everything, then they, they're back to square one. And think of a builder that is building every day. Somebody comes and demolishes the building. Then he builds again. Then somebody comes and demolishes it. What's going to happen? You're going to be fatigued. You'll be fatigued that you'll be frustrated. So we want you to get to decking level, put window, put bathroom, furnish it, and have your house popping. That's what we desire for you. Interesting. Yeah. So that will come and join your housewarming. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, now let's, let's go more internal to like Money Africa. How do you approach leadership as as a leader in your firm um that's a very interesting conversation like i was telling our team that you know 
I also did not have any, nobody trained me to be a CEO. Okay. Yeah, and that's the truth. So when you also admit that it's easier for you to be able to navigate these things, you'll make mistakes, right? Um, but what is your willingness? Like, you know, sometimes just touch base, like, oh, and the truth is, guess what? You always be a villain in, in people's stories. I was on Twitter last week and somebody tweeted that every time they work, that the person, the person, the product designer, that the, the, their supervisor just goes ahead and gives them correction without any kind words. And another person quoted that tweet, she used to work with us. She now works with BMG and says, that's one thing that I learned from, um, um Money African and Tosin will always send, give praises and then she can say, you can do this better now that might not be the story for every other person so you still make some mistakes here and there but i think in terms of leadership acknowledge people people are putting in their work acknowledge let them let them know that so you might not be able to compete with your facebook and your google in terms of pay and all of that but let 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 them give this fulfillment there's acknowledgement of their work you know exposure don't hog all the opportunities there are other opportunities to push to other people on the team let them also go and shine you understand so it's a constant learning right and i'm also grateful for things like like we got into the stanford state program they also teach you a lot about leadership because leadership starts with you you cannot change people if you're not a better person yourself so you're constantly doing that work yourself i want to be a better person i want to be a better leader then it's easier for you to replicate. Another thing as well is also holding the team responsible. So sometimes people join your team from other culture. I re- like we don't do email battles at our please I beg. We don't do it here, you know. So I know somebody had judged joined and they were doing um, so as I said I said eh, 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 I picked up fees. Huh? We, we don't we don't do that here. <laughs> We don't do that here. So when you start building that culture, people then understand it's not that deep. It's work. We want to get work done and, you know, let's keep it um, healthy. Like I said, we're not perfect. We make mistakes here and there. We just want to keep getting better. That's a very interesting take. And uh, shout out to your graphic designer as well. Oh, <laughs> shout out. Stay for a shout out. I, li- I like I like the the fonts on, oh, on the posts. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, favor. You see, you're doing a good job. <laughs> I wanted to ask this question, but I kind of skipped it. How would you? What would you? describe being financially independent as Great. i know a lot of people have yeah, different different definition for it i think for me not that i think i know that for me financial independence basically means if i'm not able to work how long can i survive for and a lot of us should be asking that question um i mean i'm gonna share the story in detail i'm just not ready i had to be in the hospital for about eight months i would share when i'm ready in detail and um we had a st- structure it, it was my close friends and people that knew that I knew right the business run and things like that i didn't know that that was going to happen so as business owners you have struck if anything was to happen for eight months can the business run are you going to still be generating revenue as um nine to fivers do you have money saved away because the truth is a company can only give you so much sick leave because at the end of the day they're also like a company right so financial independence basically means if i do not have to work anymore you know how much do i need monthly and how much have i have stashed away now remember that we all want different things Somebody might just want to be able to go back to like Onicha, enjoy the greenery, eat fresh or hot soup, you know, and pay, be able to live in a nice, decent house and all of that. And maybe travel once in a year to go and see their children abroad or wherever they are. Another person wants to be able to live like in the city, you know, send their kids to really good schools and maybe travel twice a year. Another person wants to have an entire estate. They want to own the entire estate and it is fine. Everyone's dream is valid. What Shade wants is different from what Chioma wants, is different from what Zainab wants. So just what is important to me? What do I want? And how much, if I don't have to work anymore, how long will it take me to get there? So yeah, that's it. What is a common mistake in this journey of financial Lifestyle independence? Lifestyle inflation. <laughs> Lifestyle inflation. Yes. So the, the more they earn, the more they, earn, the more they feel like... Oh, come on. Everybody is guilty. You just have to... Nip. See, the thing is this. Like I always say, choose your struggle. Right? So... Um, for instance, I really love to live in a nice place. I want my house to look like a hotel. I love it. Even when I travel, I want to stay in very good hotels. But guess what? I'm flexible with, I don't, I'm very happy to sit in economy and I'm flexible with airline. It's five hours. I'll get to my destination. But that hotel, oh my pop, I like good hotels. I want to stay in good hotels. The thing is for a lot of young people, they, they don't want to compromise. We want everything to be popping mm. and we don't have the pockets to afford for everything to be popping. So this is how lifestyle inflation works. Your revenue is increasing like this. You have to ensure it's okay for your expense to increase because, hey, you're not going to take that money to heaven anyways, but we don't want that expense to increase at the same rate. So if your revenue is doing this, maybe your expenses should do this. But if it does this, you are doing a rat race and you're running around and you have nothing to show for it. That's true. 
That's actually true. I think I think that's what's happened to me <laughs> in my <laughs> first few years. <laughs> Sorry, I added one more question. Because you said lifestyle inflation, mm-hmm. I wanted to ask what your thoughts are about frugality. Okay. So we have to be very careful about frugality as well. I know I talk a lot about my parents, but um, because my dad came from a very humble background, you sometimes see it. Um, yeah, you have to be very careful where you draw a balance between you're not then depriving yourself of things that you could actually have because, and, and it could work both ways. When people come from very humble backgrounds, they're either f- afraid of poverty, so they're very, they hold back and they don't go all out and splurge and things like that, or they try and make up for it and they go way too hard. So if people find out or they realize that you're denying yourself certain things because of forgot speak to a therapist mm. we highly recommend it because again i keep saying it money is a mind game it's a mind game and you need to be able to see yourself in that way you need to be able to draw that balance between um abundance mindset and frugality and just being able to draw but you and there are people in that category right they're sitting down on stash and stash of money and they are wearing like torn clothes or like they're not even eating well on that or they're putting themselves through extreme discomfort that they know they could buy themselves for small comfort but it's just that fear of going back into poverty mm-hmm. speak to a therapist do you know that some health insurance actually covers you access to be able to speak to a therapist i'm very big on um on fulfilled uh, living an abundant living a fulfilled life and so somebody could be living at 60 percent, but there could be room for more unlocking it and just being able to can i do better can i be more productive anyhow but you get the gist about frugality just be careful so that you're not denying yourself things that you should actually have because you're being frugal money africa does book reviews yes we do what is your three you know books psychology of money by morgan house yes i love it i love (laughs) it i love it so much um another one is richest man in babylon it's nice okay. and simple and easy to read yeah and the third one is my own upcoming book <laughs> okay so let me just leave that spot for myself but i can't tell you the title yet oh um, yeah. boy it's when, coming when, when it's coming there will be a link in the description <laughs> <laughs> have you read the the millionaire next door yes i have it's a nice book it's a nice easy book it's relatable it's a nice book it's a good yeah, one that's my favorite one. Oh, i love it have you ever had a time where you kind of doubted what you were doing are you kidding me many <laughs> times so when i quit when i left my job and i started you know i thought i was going on a break and just taking some time of rest and all of that and i was just going to go back into the job market and you know money africa blew up in my face with doing content and people really loved it and they just wanted to you know tap into it um it felt like because I mean, there's no office. You're just wearing red lipstick and putting Instagram in your face and doing one minute. So people will be asking you, so I've been sharing your previous colleagues and people that you knew that, uh-uh, commercial finance manager at a multinational covering West Africa market and you're just doing, and now influencers now have good reputation. <laughs> yeah. Four or five years ago, yeah. it's like, what are you yeah. doing with yeah. your life? Right. People will be asking, is this like a side hustle? Like, is this the job? Like, this cannot be it. Like, it felt like a downgrade. And um, yes, there were times I really doubted. I'm not going to lie about that. That yes, I did have doubts, and um, I did really did have doubts. I've, of course, I'm like in the. I'm currently at the best. I feel like I'm at the best part of my life. I can see the vision clearly. I'm in a very good space. But I wouldn't lie that there were times I doubted it. Interesting. Yeah. But if you weren't doing this, I w- I don't think, I, don't think. <laughs> it's a life mission. I genuinely enjoy speaking about money. I en- genuinely enjoy teaching. Oh, if I wasn't doing this, maybe I'll be doing something about travel, but it will have to come to fulfillment mm. because it looks like we're talking about educating people about money, but what we're actually selling is joy. Yeah. Many people are holding back on their dreams or things that they really go after because of money troubles. So when you get those troubles out of the way, they can go and live their best life. So if I was doing this particular thing, it should have been something about living a fulfilled life, something along those lines. There's a question I asked you in this entire interview that was brought up by Chad GPT. Can you guess the question? <laughs> oh, it was the common mistakes oh, that people make. That people make. <laughs> but it just is 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 the fact that AI is like becoming huge now. What yeah. what is your take on AI? On AI, AI is here to stay, right? It's here to stay. We should be asking ourselves how can we incorporate AI. And how can we use it to the best of our advantage? Remember when social media first came and people were like, oh, I'm too cool for social media. 
Now, all of them are trying to be a media company. All the people that turned their eyes and they were snubbing it, they are now all creating, they are all become creating media. They're now going heavy on their media. So you can join them 10 years later or you can be an early adopter. It will happen and it's here to stay. How can we use it to our advantage? How can we leverage? How can we be, you know, early, early adopters? And that's uh, it's here to stay. So if you would describe what you're doing right now, like your current situation what are you working on right now and what are you building okay so now right now we're already building money africa kids you know we're educating children about money we want to start we want to be able to start learning about habits and start being able to um predict what they're going to do right and this is where ai comes in right even with those that are also investing like their spending habits we want to be able to predict so we can warn them in advance that at this particular part of the month this is what you usually do you can do this differently. So this is a good way that we also want to be able to use, you know, artificial intelligence, also be able to predict behavior and how to then help them to turn it to their advantage. And is this how you see the future being? For yes, it's it's here to stay. Yes. And so we can fight it or you can just embrace it and, and, and adopt it. So the final question um, is something we always do with our guests is, if you can look into this camera mm-hmm. and give one advice to any young person watching... Yes this video that wants to grow out of their current situation Mm -hmm. and they want to do better than they currently are Mm -hmm. just you know one advice you are your biggest assets the stock market could crumble the real estate market could crumble but that you you will always be there invest aggressively in yourself start seeing yourself as a person of value you nobody can take that away from you no matter what happens in the market that value in yourself stays so invest aggressively in yourself be the better version of yourself and it's always you versus you not any other person out there it's always you and the better version of you so invest in yourself today Woo. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice one nice one thank you so much You're for welcome. your time You're i welcome. i truly appreciate it thank you so much for watching this episode of the leaderboard if you've got any feedback for us please comment below tomorrow our episode with taoma one of nigeria's biggest comedians will be exclusively released on the channel for members only anybody that wants to give me opportunity please don't don't this this our size i was drunk i'm drunk <laughs> and the episode will have some bts that won't be public while the public episode will be out for everyone next week